Right, today's vid is suspension. Um, HPMC lifts, there's pretty much um, only one company that provides them on track and we're gonna be fitting one up today and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Actually, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not, I'm jack of all trades, master of none. We're gonna get some mechanics to fit it up and, um, but we'll document it. So I don't know if this is something you really wanna try at home, but it's interesting. And for any other mechanics looking to get into the Y62, and um, of course you can get your suspension from Dash Off Road, uh, this is a bit of a, a way how Steve Allen does it. Here we have a prime example as a stock as a rock Y62. We're going to look at eyebrow heights. You want to do this before you start any suspension build. <laughs> Not really organised here. Anyway, go from centre of wheel hub. Oh, it's about there. Up to eyebrow height. Usually stock is 530. This one's 540. Got a, maybe it's on a bit of a lean or something. Um, note the, well, we'll look at the front as well. This one, center wheel hub. Probably not as accurate as it could be. That's more like it, 530. That's what we're used to seeing on a stock as a rock one. This does have a predator bar. That doesn't seem to make much difference. We're doing the lift on this car today. This car is had a recently had a Razzler rear bar on it, and there's a fridge and stuff in the back. When we have a look at this one, center of wheel hub, great photography here, videography. I'm getting 490, probably a bit of parallax error there. But that shows you how much weight affects these cars, and they can drop down. Independent suspension, like if this is a Land Cruiser, you add weight, nothing much happens. Patrols, you add weight and you get real negative effects. Um, you get more toe, so the wheel wants to turn in and you get um, some camber issues, which scrubs tires. So getting the suspension right on a Y62 is so important because of the independent um, rear end or all, all, all round independent. So pretty much every time you want to put suspension in, put airbags in too. And uh, there's so many different coils so uh, and suspension lifts. Talk about the front first. There's pretty much a light and a medium. So if you've got a car with just um, no bar at all, or maybe a Predator bar um, because they're light, uh, you could just go for the light front end. But as soon as you have a Predator bar with a winch or pretty much any other bar in the market, um, then you need to go for the medium uh, uh, front lower control arm lift. I'm not talking about coils at all in this particular video. I'll do that in another one. On the back, I think there's about six different variants of coils. There's King standard height, but increased spring rate. Then there's um, a bunch of two inch lifted ones, but with different weights. So you can go a light rear, which will give you like a zero to 200 sort of thing. So no weight in the car at all. Um, disregard whether you're towing or anything like that, the airbags make up for the towing. So uh, then you go to the medium and that's if you've got either a LRA or a uh, Razzler rear or Kmar rear bar. Uh, then you go up to the heavy, and that's if you've got a rear bar and LRA. And then there's a super heavy, which is uh, 400 plus kilos. And that's like the burger with the works. Uh, roof racks, bash plates, big fridge, uh, back fully loaded up, long range tank, rear bar, sliders, you name it, everything that you can put on there, basically for GVM upgrades, and then uh, both the 400s and 400 plus springs, you want to, uh, or heavy, super heavy, you want to have the billet rear arms as well, because there's enough weight in the car that you're going to start bending that lower control arm at the back. So once you put a rear bar on, it's a slippery slope. You've got to really start spending money on the billet arms and probably a GVM upgrade too. I'm not going to touch GVM upgrades because it's different every state. Don't ask me about GVM upgrades. It's best to ask your local Y62 specialist because it is different in every state. Uh, SA come to me, that's fine. We're off and running. So, this is your factory Nissan lower control arm. That's your HBMC system. We are not gonna touch that today because, well, basically it's pretty hard to do unless you've got the right tools. So what we do to lift these vehicles is we um, use a modified um, bracket from on track. Well, it's not a bracket, it's all like welded on and such. Looks like this, but this is where the lift in the front comes from. So that bit gets higher. You don't touch the HBMC at all. Um, so that's what we're gonna do to the front, pull that out. 
You don't have to do upper control arms, but it's not a bad idea. So that's the factory ones. Um, So that's the factory ones. They are quite big and chunky. They're quite light duty as well. It's just pressed metal. Um, this is what we end up doing, either a dash or black hawk upper control arm. Um, and that has a ball joint, which um, can, what is it? Angle slightly more, an extra 15 degrees. Nothing huge, but just a little bit. Uh, and you do get a little bit more, well, droop out of here as well. Note the bump stops, so this is the factory bump stop. If you've had your car lifted and you're still running factory bump stops, change them to these ones. This is the extended bump stop. That's what you need on a lifted car. Right, so we might as well ask the master here, what are we gonna do today? All right, we're gonna be doing a two inch lift and a lot of people ask us how to do it and what to do and what not to do and let's just do a video and we'll show people. I'll just do a brief discussion on each corner so we can get an idea on, on what to do. Lower control arm in these particular ones get replaced. Um, this is where the two inch lift is achieved. Um, so we don't have to worry about doing any fall springs or anything like that. That's, you know, with HBMC, let's just leave that. For the time being, we've got this nice lower control arm with this bracket. Um, process of getting this whole system undone, I like to leave everything out of the way. So we're not uh, trying to fight to get this ball joint undone, pinch a uh, CV boot. Let's just get everything out of the way. I've done it like that since day one. I've had no dramas. People say to me, I might take the long way, but you know what? It's the right way for me to uh, not stuff anything and have an angry customer. The lower control arm, if you're undoing the, uh, the lower strut bolt, loosen these off, just loosen them for the time being so we can uh, have everything ready to rock and roll. This nut, this nut up here for the upper control arm, you want to undo those. Obviously you've got split pins on there and you've got your tie rod in. So definitely undo all those three. You've got a little nut on the brake line. You don't need to undo the whole brace. There's just one nut that you can undo to get rid of that flexi line. Just move it out of the way, undo the caliper and hang it up out the way. So it's not gonna be pulling on the, uh, on the uh, flexi hose. Get rid of the disc, take some weight away and then you can start cracking your ball joints. So once you crack your ball joints with the nut still left a little bit loose so it doesn't fling up and smack in the jobs. Um, and then tie rod end, same things. Once you've got all that loose, you can take that whole unit away. Um, sorry, did forget about the ABS line. There is a little ABS line that will need to be unplugged from the from the top here. If I unplug it there, and then you just got the little clip that you'll be able to just pop off, and you just slip them simply off out the way, tuck it around so you don't damage that line or pull on it. Now, once you've got that all off, you've got your lower control arm that would have swung down nice and loose. You can't get these bolts out unless you do a little bit of a trick. So the trick is, with these uh, HBMC lines, they do interfere. Those of you want to come around here. That particular bolt there comes back and fouls up against that HBMC line. HBMC lines are something you just want to be careful in regards of um, yanking on them, pulling on them. So if you loosen everything, so that bolt there, that bolt there, and this one here, they're all 13s. That just gives you a little bit of play so you can get that particular bolt out. Obviously bash plates and all that have to be removed on this one so we can get the uh, HBMC line, I don't know what that is, like a bash plate, a protection plate. If we get rid of this as well and undo it so it's all loose, we can move that up and down without doing any stressful you know, damage to those lines. So get rid of the plate, undo the 13s, get a little bit of flex, you can get that bolt out. Once that's out, this piece are on the arm. Just a matter of making sure that these go up nice. It's probably easier to um, just hang it again and just in reverse, just put it all back together. It's not a uh, it's not a hard process, but once it's all once it's all done and, and nice and neat and tidy, just make sure you um, nip them up loose. Get ready for the wheel arm. Okay, now we got um, upper control arms. Look, these have turned out to be. Very, very important for um, for our wheel alignments, but I'll explain that in a minute. But doing this arm is, uh, you think it'd be easy. It's a little bit tricky because you've got to take the actual uh, power steer pump. The power steer pump's got to come off. So if you if you just loosen the pump and move it forward, then you can get that bolt out. So up here, Dave. It's a bit hard because I've still got the liner on. Obviously, take the liner off to give yourself some plenty of plenty of access. 
to uh, get in there. That um, belt, just flip the belt off, and you have a 14 mil nut that's the pivot bolt I class as. And you've also got another 12 mil up there, which is just your locker nut, which holds that pump in the right spot. You've also got that plate there that holds the wiring loom that does interfere. There's a little 10 mil just up the back there. If you pop that 10 mil off, you'll be able to move that out of the way to be able to get that bolt to then come out once that pump's moved over. You don't need to take any hydraulic lines off. There's no leaks, there's no problems with um, just moving it, to the, moving it forward out of its position and then putting it back in. So once that's back in its position, the bolt's back in, um, get it set up so it's good in there just loosely. Um, the, reason, the reason I say that is just due to the fact that that bush is fixed and moulded part of that actual rubber. Okay, so that there is something that you don't want to lock up in a, in a shitty angle where it's leaning all the way down because then you've got to lift it up hard against that to get it back in the ball joint. So it will just damage that uh, bush. You want to tighten them back up once the car is back on normal ride height, so back on the ground. Um, all right. The reason for these, standard caster on a patrol at standard height is around about four, four and a half positive. So we want to be able to go, all right, we're going to lift this car, but when we lift it, we're only achieving about two and a half, which is really, really light on the steering. Like you literally drive out and go, wow, what's going on here? That's actually dangerous. So by putting these upper arms in, is giving us a really good caster reading back, back to standard around about that three and a half, four and a half, we can achieve easily. It's give you a beautiful firm feel on that steering. So it's critical to get them done at the same time as that two inch lift. Uh, we should say what caster is. So when you lift a car, the wheels go backwards because everything goes up, wheels get sucked in and go back. And that changes the geometry of your car. We want to put the wheels to go back forward and that uh, increases caster and that gives that drive back. All right. Yep, that's correct. Perfect. Yep. All right, welcome to the back of the car now. All right, so uh, the back of the car. A little bit more involved. Um, looks like you would just put a spring in the back and be done with it, but no, you can't uh, You can't do that. You'll be driving down the road with your wheels looking like this. So uh, we've got to muck around with these camber and caster bushes. And camber and caster bushes are something that I've, um, you know, spent a bit of time trying to work out how to do this dreaded ball joint, sometimes she gets jammed or, uh, you know, people have different ideas on how to get this ball joint undone. If we were to get that uh, little split pin undone just underneath and uh, jack this back end up once it's lower to the ground and safe, you can open up the mouth in that section, which you can put a, uh, a nice little block in that section just here. And when you lower that uh, arm back down, it obviously wants to pinch and get very close like it is on the angle now and it puts a lot of pressure on that ball joint to be able to release it. If it doesn't work straight away, you can just give it a little bit of a tap or a tap on the sides, just to give a little bit of a shock to pop that ball joint. And that has been quite successful ever since we've been doing that. Um, the bushes at the back side, they do take in place of the genuine bush up here in this section, both front and rear of that upper arm. Now, please, when you get these off, don't, uh, don't sit there and think, oh yeah, I can jam that back in. There is a couple of little lugs, two little nipples that need to be shaved down flat on this particular surface where the new bush goes in. Make sure you get them done. Um, to get this arm out, um, there is a little bit of a process just to get that arm out. I know I sort of jumped off a little bit there, but that, the bushes are self-explanatory. You've got instructions how to do it in the box, but um, getting the arm out is a bit tricky. So I've explained about the ball joint. Um, obviously crack the uh, bolts at the back for the main swing arm and then you've got a little 13mm HBMC line at the top which I'll shine my light on it's the little HBMC line bracket or brace undo that there which gives you a little bit of movement in this arm in this uh, HBMC line to be able to get this arm out without doing any damage when you do remove it other thing is lower shock amount this bolt here is something that you want to undo get rid of it and just move that shocker up out of its socket and just move it up a little bit without removing the whole thing. Just move it up out a little bit, which then moves this whole shocker out of the way to give you that bit more room again to be able to get that arm out without damaging the boot. Um, and then the HBMC line and everything's just gonna move out the way nice. You've got these little 13mm nuts that hold the, once again, flexi line for the brake caliber. You wanna get that 
off there because that's part of the arm so you can get it out successfully. Once you've done the arm, we might be able to show some pictures in this uh, little vlog of some of the um, positions where we put it and how much lubricant we over grease them so we don't get that horrible squeak if we, we got too, not enough grease in it. But also, once it's greased inside the bushes, make sure you grease on the uh, K-frame so when it slides in, you don't get that side effect of it rubbing and squeaking. That's just a couple of little tips. I hope that helps. The spring, look, spring self-explanatory. You got your main bolt that goes onto your uh, rose bush here. Take that out. Having some sort of a jack or a device that you can use to safely bring that down with the old spring, pop the old spring out, and then your new springs then go in in reverse order. The uh, reverse order um, can be a little bit hairy because it's a longer spring, but uh, you know, just take your time. Make sure you line it up nice. You can move this left and right to be able to manipulate it. You can even get it into a position where it's close. You can put a screwdriver through and just try and give it a bit of a guide to make sure it's nice and smooth going through there for your bolt. It will want to move that way when, you, when you've got that force of everything. So once again, if you lower to the ground or got a device that you can use that's safe, just be careful. Um, once that pivot bolt's back in, little tip is um, that, you know, I actually stuffed up on, on the, the original spring that you take out. There is a, um, there is a, um, anti squill I don't even know what it's called it's just there to stop it the coil spring from rubbing but that that noise that it affects without that rubber there without that plastic protector there is horrible so definitely take that off the original and put it onto your newbies so once we put that back in place and it's got the weight of the car back on it we've not got that horrible sweet customer coming back wanting to uh, shoot us because we put crappy things in their car if we uh, Put this back in place. Just make sure it sits nice home as well. Because if it's if it does sit anywhere poorly in that area, you can have that spring just touch that K-frame area just here. And that there is poor as well. So when you're driving down the road, it can squeak up and down, up and down, up and down. So just make sure that it sits and locates in that top upper rubber perfect. And then you'll be uh, you'll be laughing. Everyone will be happy. About, uh, that's about all for the rig. It's just a matter of making sure that you get those bushes right, which I'm sure we'll show you a picture in, in this one. Uh, just a, an idea on where it should be sitting and make sure we get nice uh, readings when we do our, uh, our wheel alignments. You add on with um, how I was explaining before, it's a bit hard because they have bash plates on there, but this will simplify it for everyone. This is the little bash plate that goes up underneath the car, which uh, supports all the HBMC lines, protects them. Protects them. And, uh, Obviously once I've got everything all off and out of the way, we can now see it a lot easier. Um, but going back onto the HBMC line so we don't damage them, we can get our main pivot bolts out or the adjuster for the wheel aligner bolts out of the lower control arm. Um, as I was explaining, we undo the 1, 2, 3, 13 mil bolts to be able to just loosen it. It's only fractionally loosening those HBMC lines, but it's taken away the pressure just so we don't uh, do any damage on bending them out of the way. So, once you've got this plate off, which is under here, sorry about that, having to duck around everything, but we're working at the back of the car as well. So that obviously sits up and protects our HBMC lines. You want to get rid of that. You've also got uh, some little brackets under here, um, which you want to loosen to also just give you that little bit of play so you're not putting any stress on any of those lines. Once you get the, uh, the lines all loose, you can pull down on that gently and you can get this bolt out over top just like so okay Lock controller comes out like that all done so it's just a matter of doing things slowly making sure you do these little steps so we don't do any damage to those HP and C lines I don't think your boss will be very happy if that uh, came in and said one of them are leaking have the uh, upper ball joint which can be a bit of a fight for everyone and I've had lots of phone calls on how to get this undone. Um, we're going to do our uh, little trick today. I've just got a nice little spacer. I'll do a measurement and I'll put that measurement up on the uh, screen and um, with a little shim that I put in there just to make it a little bit easier to fight in there. I'll put this in in the little mount that we've opened by jacking the car up. Charles, um, close look at that little shim thing you got. 
I just put a little uh, shim on that together, which gives me a little bit of a, uh, a chip to get in first, and then I can put that in after. As you can see, we've used and abused it, but uh, it works. All right. Okay, so uh, car on the hoist, everything hanging loose. We've just jacked up the lower control arm to open up the mouth in that section there. So what we uh, are trying to achieve is, is to uh, pinch this up inside, which I'll show. Let's put the little shim in there, put our little spacer in. Okay, so we get that to sit inside the mouth so we can eventually slowly lower the system down, uh, the, the suspension down and have that pinch inside which is gonna put a lot of force on that ball joint and uh, hopefully pop it for us. So we'll just do the uh, example for you while David uh, shows the video. Coming down with it. Puts a lot of pressure on that ball joint and pops it for us. So uh, perfect example. You've really got to uh, just let it fall down on the jack. And then if you can get it to pop, it's gonna save an hour of trying to fight with that one little ball joint and save so much time. Scared the crap out of me. Okay, another tip is uh, when we come to this upper control arm, a lot of people have called me to say, how do I get this bolt out? Can I just do this little bracket? Can I just move this bracket out of the way? And it's like, nah, you've got to move the pump out of the way. People do cringe a little bit. You can hear it on their voice when they start talking to me. And they're like, oh no, this is going to be hard. But it's not really that hard. So, tips are, get it all loose. So it's all ready to rock and roll. The first little uh, 10 mil, which is just this little 10 mil here that holds that, um, the brace on which holds the wiring loom. So we can just pull that out of the way. So that's done. Put that aside. Uh, 14 mil deep single hex. Probably a good idea to use single hex because if you use a double hex and you do slip, the last thing you want to do is try and dig out a bolt that you've screwed in that in that area behind the pulley. So that just sits in behind the pulley. Once the belt's off, you can move that around. There's holes everywhere. So just put it through the pulley and you can get onto this 12 mil. Now, I will. I have left this one partially assembled so I can do it at the same time. If I undo that bolt, pull it through the pulley hole. There's a little block that sits at the back. Try and get it out without dropping it. Okay, so that little block is the locator for your bolt, which is your pivot bolt. That'll just keep turning and then lock up and then undo your actual main bolt. So we'll just get that bolt out. It's very awkward because David's got a phone stuck in my face. <laughs> <laughs> just bear with me two seconds, I'll just get this bolt out. So that's your main pivot bolt, take it all the way out so when you do it up, it'll turn, it'll lock up on the alloy housing that it sits in and then it will slowly close over and tighten up. So that's your main pivot bolt. Okay, so the next bolt you've got to undo to get this pump out is at three o'clock. So looking at the front of the pulley, so looking at it that way, looking at the pump at three o'clock, there is another 12 mil bolt that you can undo to release that out of the actual cradle the power steer pump sits in. I'll just get it out for you. Okay, so obviously I've loosened it, it, loosened it all, but that is your other 12 mil that slots in at three o'clock. So three o'clock definitely, don't undo any others because then you'll have a leak. So that one there is the, is the locker for the power steer pump. All right, so once you've got that, I'll just go over quickly. So you've undone your brace, which holds your loom. You've undone your pivot bolt, which is 14. It's got that block that sits at the back that locks when it turns. And then you've got at three o'clock, the little 12 mil. Once you've done that, you're able to then, without undoing any hydraulic lines, just move the pump wiggle it out of its out of its spot i'm sure dave will cut and shut these uh struggles no, it's all raw low editing <laughs> all right so we've got it out of that little spot because in there is a little 
spacer block that will move over and make that locating uh, located the locate the pivot of that power steer pump nice and firm. So we just had to rock it out of there. So now that we've got that pump loose, we can just move it forward and just move the loom out of the way and then undo and get out that silly bolt that interferes with everything. That's it. That's done. But putting it back together is pretty cool for something that I've always done since day one. Just another little tip. So once we've got the old one out, throw it to the side, get the new one. And those bolts we reuse. Copper ease. All your mechanics are gonna love you. If you use this, it's gonna be able to be able to re remove easy. When we do wheel alignments, when we go back to tightening them up, we haven't, all, we haven't dragged in all the debris and made it all lock up and stuff the threads. Trust me, use it on those ones. And also, your wheel aligner box. So those are uh, your lower control arm ones. Your wheel aligner is gonna crack that nut and it's gonna be seized. We like to take these through salt water, dirt, love day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously by um, taking these out, any moisture that gets in that cavity will lock solid that. Your wheel aligner will loosen that nut and he won't be able to move it. It'll actually move the whole bush at the same time. It's a nightmare. So copper is the whole lot. Once it's in there, going to save lots of headaches. Okay, so we've got the dreaded bolt that's backwards. Okay, everyone loves this one. So this is uh, this is prime. Do you cut it out, Steve? Do you take the K-frame down? Look, I took the K-frame down once, and I went, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to cut it. So what we got is the, the upper control arm. You've got the bolt that goes in this way. Take that one completely out. That's very easy. Once that's out, undo the nut and push the bolt back as far as you can, put a breaker bar, oh sorry, a, a lever bar up in there, jam it in there so it just makes that bolt stay still because we're going to cut it, okay? We're going to cut that bolt smack in half. Once it's in half, we can get it out easy, proceed on. Um, I use one of these little air saws, works brilliant. Yeah, you go through the cutters, high tensile bolt, but if you use a little bit of the um, spray just to help um, you know, make, the, make the cutter last a bit longer, go for it. You don't have to use that, you can use whatever. Just give it a bit of a spray on the actual bolt. And uh, with it locked up like it is, it's putting force on the bolt, which is just stopping it spinning. Okay, so I'll just show you, it's already half cut, so I'll just go through it and finish off the, uh, the rest of the cut for you. It does take a little bit of time, so uh, bear with us, I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so the head of the bolt's obviously taken off now. Just take that back out so you can unlock it. Push the bolt back through. All right, bolt's your uncle. It's easier to do this than try and drop the K-frame down. But what we do is, uh, to be, to be fair, I don't want to be putting any willy nilly bolt back in there. We do order a genuine bolt. That is the part number there if you wanted to uh, take our steps. It's pretty critical. I mean, these cars are towing some pretty heavy vehicles, so the last thing I do is have a bolt that wears out or comes loose or just does something wrong because we've manipulated it. But turning it around has got no, no issues, there's no problems. The locator on the actual bolt is there, it sits in nice. Perfect. So once you've got to this stage, you'll be able to get that arm out. Like I said, we do move the shock and lower section out of the way to give us a little bit more play. We've also got the bolt up top that we manipulate to be able to get it out. It's easy. There's no fighting, there's no struggling, there's no damage. It's just a matter of getting it out and doing our bush job. We'll do that in a very uh, short, short step after. There is one more thing I can show you while we're here though. Got my lights. Now if you want to come around here. The little nipples I was talking about that if you don't shave off, he's gonna give you all sorts of grief to be able to get back in. So the little nipples 
Sorry about the dirty hands, but uh, those little nipples there, all right, they are the ones you have to just grind off so they're nice and smooth. So when you put the new bush in that goes in, doesn't lock up on there and do any damage. So it's just a matter of being uh, careful taking these nipples off. You don't go too far because you don't want to go too thin. But just get them so they're smooth and then just rub some nice grease in around that area. Okay, so rear camber bushes. Um, this one here can be a little bit tricky. Once again, people have their own idea on how to get them out. But we have our little idea how to get them out without doing any damage to these um, to the sockets that the uh, new bush is going to sit in. I've got the uh, rose bush puller that we use for like four pouches and so forth, which is just a uh, little wind back, pushes from the inside out and gets these bushes out successful with a little bit of heat. So it's going to run through it with you. Um, so first things first, uh, put the rod through the guts. Obviously these bushes only come out one way. Um, you got like a step that sits on the back side of everything and that step I'll explain in a minute because once we put the new bushes together we've got a process that uh, you can't go wrong because there's a fatter step and a, and a thinner step on each end of those bushes. So what we've done is uh, we've just managed to find a bearing shell that will sit just on the inside edge of these bushes, okay? So it'll push through without interfering with the, uh, the main housing. So that's something I'll just let you guys uh, transfer back into your bits and bobs and see if you can find something. So I'll set this one up so we can get it all uh, up and going. I use these little spacers all the time for everything. Pretty much just using the thread to hold it all in one place. So it's a bit hard this one to explain, but if, um, if we can get a couple of shots of people get an idea, it's gonna be perfect for someone to take the steps themselves. All right, so just load her up. We know that our little space is going to sit in there, perfect. We've got the little spacer or bearing shell that I use that's going to press on there nice and even. And we've also got the uh, next step down which is part of the kit that that comes out of. So we can uh, not wreck any of our specialised tools. So we just wind that out so it's got a little bit of pressure. A little bit of pressure on that uh, inner genuine bush right on that shell which is that lip right there so we're just putting it on that so we can put a little bit of pressure compact that down and then that'll hold it all in place so I'm just going to turn it to use a couple of shifters You're just going to have to bear with me a little bit there is a little bit of time to take setting these up but everyone will get the idea of what's going on so I just nip it nip it up firm which is just compacting, if you come around here, compacting that bush back down so it's gonna bottom out. So there's not a lot of pressure going on anything at the moment because that opposite bush is just squashing in. Once it's locked, which is now, it's getting to the point where it's firmish, I'm making sure that my little spacer is nice and even and it's pushing on the right components. Just give it a bit more, all right. get the heat, you can use uh, whatever you want, a little hot devil, mat gas, whatever you want to call it, just to run around. You don't want to put too much heat. You don't want to put too much heat, but if we can get a nice amount of heat in around it evenly, it just breaks the seal and makes it move a lot easier, which I'll explain in a second. I'll just do this one. Enough. You can 
see the, uh, the bush is starting to get that hot that it's melting the rubber. And then we just proceed back with using that internal thread that we use to start pushing it out. Straight away, you can see it's starting to come away nice and neat and tidy. I haven't put an excessive amount of pressure on this to cause it to uh, lose its shape. This is where we just work a little bit quicker to make sure that, that bush keeps coming out and it doesn't freeze back over it. It doesn't get cold. Once it cools down, it'll start to nip up again. These bushes, they seem to have some sort of like uh, a coating they put on it or uh, a glue, something. But putting a bit of heat in there just releases it and stops it from uh, nipping up and causing any damage to the main arm, which we want to reuse. As you can see, the sticky, the sticky glue that I'm talking about is that there. It's sort of like a uh, paste they must put on there. But uh, by putting a little bit of heat into that, it just releases it, makes it come off a lot easier for everyone. I do use a wire wheel uh, just to clean up the inside, make sure it's nice and clean. If there's any like thicker uh, bits of metal that have stayed behind, we'd skew it a bit of a sand. So obviously, when we put the new bushes in, we don't damage it. It's the same process as uh, you know any mechanical job. You just got to make sure that it's nice and smooth, and you're not going to damage the new seal when you put it in a uh, new bush. So. so we uh, obviously I just pressed that one out. You've all seen me do that one, so I wasn't going to go and put you through a, another 10 minutes of pain. I've done exactly the same. So I just pushed that out, cleaned it up, give it a bit of paint, stop it rusting. Next thing, bushes, the critical part. These bushes we just pressed out. You saw me all take them out that way. They all come out backwards. Now the backside, where that lip sits, is where the thicker part of the bush, the new one, goes. Now when I say thicker part, the two halves of the bush has a thick and a thin, okay? You don't wanna go and double up and put too thick, too thin. It's got to be that way. That's the way the bush sits. Okay, so that other side is exactly the same. So the thicker part, like I said, goes to the rear. And we don't want to put any grease in here. It's a big no-no. I've been taught from day one of being a mechanic, you do not put grease on the outside. You want the inside to move, not the outside. Okay, so that there, the thicker one. that in there and the thin one and it goes to the front and when I mean front when that arm's in the car that points back and that points forward same again follows the same process thicker one at the back thin one at the front okay so that there is our bush in now when we get the bag of um, bushes and, and so forth, we get these little sachets. Um, ignore the sachet for the minute. Don't worry about using just the sachet, because it's not enough grease. These do start squeaking six to 12 months down the track. And the last thing you need is a little Gemini sound going down the road in your $80,000 patrol. So over grease them, pack them. There's a little slit in the side, in the middle of those two halves. It hasn't joined completely up, fill it. So get yourself some of the uh, molly grease. Um, buy some so you can just smash it in, put heaps in there, like put a big blob on the end of your finger, smash it in there and really push it into that groove in between. Definitely don't think you're not overdoing it, put heaps in. Now I'm probably going to get some comments for the way I'm putting the grease in, but uh, you just got to do it. Practice. <laughs> Alright. We haven't been waiting for this bit. Where do I put the bushes? What angle do I put them on? In the instructions it does say, put a line across them. It does help. I've done it since day one too. 
you try and do it without, you can be out a little bit. So put a line across them in the uh, horizontal way that's going to give you the option to be able to look at that line and be able to put it in the right spot. We've all taken our measurements on the angle this arm sat before we've removed them at right height. And to be honest with you, this one was sitting very, very flat. So you can just imagine when you put a two inch lift, your suspension is going to be on an angle. So we need to make sure that they go on a two inch lift angle to be able to support and give us the, the best achievement for our wheel alignments. So I'm going to take it out of here. Okay? Make life a bit easier for everyone. Ours sat in the car, very, very flat. Okay, so that, that this particular one did because it was um, quite excessive amount of weight on the back. We're going to be sitting this one at two inches, but theoretically it's probably going to be sitting at about three inches the time we finish with it. It's going to have the right springs to support the gear that's been put in the back of this and a Razzler rear bar. So, in in the uh, hindsight of everything, make life a lot easier. That mark there, always. Uh, sorry, that offset hole always goes towards the ball joint. Makes life a lot easier. If we have that in our head, it just flows. Everything goes together nice. So if I put that in the insert and I have it square to the arm, that's wrong. Because this arm is now going to be sitting into a car with a two inch lift. So we're going to get that pitch. It's going to look something like that once it's in the car with a two inch lift. So we need to bring that around so when it's sitting in the car that line is then square to the arm being in its new position all right so we do have the measurements and the instructions that's been uh, in the box with this lift kit so if i am going to look at my my arm being straight the pitch of that being on a slight angle of the percentage that we need from the measurements we've taken first we're going to get we're going to get wheel alignments we're going to nail them they're going to be really, really nice. So I'll just put that back in there now that you've got the idea. Okay, same again. Towards the ball joint, the offset. And then when we sit back and we look, we want to evenly set them at the, at the alignment that we got. Both equally the same. So that will give you an idea on roughly where it's meant to sit. I've got to still put them in and push them home. By uh, the other side. I use the vise. Sorry about that. I use the vise to uh, help me push them home. Holds it all together nice and even. to make those lines sit exactly where we want them. And that's the bushes. You can start putting it all together. Once it goes back into the uh, car, we want to get it sitting in the right position. That's going to be for our two inch lift. So it's going to be down. Once it's in that nice position, we're going to then lock up both those bolts. Really lock them up tight. So those little, uh, little marks that are in the bush, those little teethy marks that you'll see, those little uh, notches that are in there lock that bush into the K-frame and that bush is never ever going to move. That's going to be locked solid. So that there is then going to rotate the bush to the inside steel bush. So it's always going to move. That's why we don't lubricate the outer edges of the bushes. That's why we only lubricate the middle section. So it moves in there freely without giving you that squeak. Once it's all locked, you're ready to go. You can put it all back together and uh, proceed with um, getting on with the wheel alignment once it's all back on the ground. Thank you. It's the afternoon now, motoring along, finishing off this side. This one's all done, this is what we want it to look like. Look at that. Very nice. And I'm gonna point out this up control arm. You can remember the one before, I don't know if you got a good look at how far it drooped. We're getting more droop out of this. Um, Probably because of less material, but also just because the ball joint can tilt just slightly further. And that is going to be a 
well set up car geometry wise. It's all happening. Basically now it's just over to the wheel aligner. So I'm hoping that this uh, suspension video has helped you guys out. Not that I actually think people will really install this very often um, in their own you know, backyard, that sort of thing, just because it's pressing the, the bushes and all that sort of thing. But um, I hope it gives you an insight on what happens with suspension uh, on these vehicles and why it's so different to you know, a Land Cruiser or um, you know, a lot of other four wheel drives out there. Anyway, this one's a wrap. I'll see you again on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.